Effects of British Rule in India The British came to India at the start of the 17th century. They annexed many princely states and established their colonies across the country. The British rule in India from 1858 to 1947. They formed laws and policies of their own. In this module, you will learn about the various effects the British rule had in India. During the British rule, India witnessed a single type of administration. The British implemented different policies like divide and rule, doctrine of lapse and doctrine of subsidiary alliance could effectively exercise control over India. The policies helped them successfully bring uniformity in administration and in the maintenance of law and order. The Industrial Revolution which began in England in the 18th century adversely affected the Indian economy. The British exported the raw material from India at cheaper rates, manufactured finished goods in England and sold them in India at cheaper rates. The handmade products of India could not compete with the machine-made cheaper goods. As a consequence, the domestic industry started closing down and many people lost their jobs. The British had a primary intention of gaining profit and eventually conquer the vast territory of India. They needed revenue to finance their projects and run the administration. Therefore, they introduced a number of land revenue settlements to extract taxes from the farmers. These tax systems were the Zamindari or Permanent Settlement System, the Roitwari Settlement and the Mahalwari Settlement. In different areas, the system had different names, but the object of all the systems was to exploit the farmers. Let's look in detail at these different land tax systems. During the rule of the kings, a fixed tax was collected based on the quantity of the produce. The British introduced a new system of collecting tax and the right to land ownership was taken away from the farmers. Land tax was fixed on the area of the land and not the quantity of the produce. Lord Convalis introduced the Zamindari system in Bengal, Bihar and Orissa. According to this system, the landlords or zamindars had to collect a fixed amount from the farmers and pay the government. The zamindars collected more taxes, paid the government only a fixed amount and used the rest for themselves to lead a luxurious life. The Roitwari system was introduced by Alexander Reed in Madras, Mumbai, Sindh, Bihar and Assam and was later maintained by Thomas Munro. According to this system, the farmers or Roth acquired the rights to ownership of the land and had to pay a tax fixed on the error of the land. If the farmers failed to pay the tax, they lost the rights to the land and eventually the government had the authority to sell the land. An extension of this rule was that all land disputes were to be taken to the courts instead of the village panchayat. The Mahalwari system was introduced in 1822 in the Ganges Valley, northwestern provinces, central provinces and Punjab. It was introduced by R. M. Baird and James Thompson. Under the Mahalwari system, the tax was assessed on the basis of a mahal or estate, which may be a village or a group of villages. The mahaldar or owner of the mahal acted as an agent in place of the zamindar. The mahaldar was jointly responsible to pay the sum of revenue assessed by the government. In major cities, industries with modern technology and machinery came into existence. Foreign investment and ownership too increased in the Indian industrial sector. The British imparted Western education to retain their identity. Religious education was limited to a small section 
as a result of some traditional schools and madrasas. As recommended by Lord Macaulay's report, the foundation for English education was laid down by Lord William Bentinck. This enabled rational thinking and study of Western literature. In the Hindu College of Bengal, the East India Company started teaching Western literature, humanities and science. Various universities came up at Calcutta, Madras and Bombay. An engineering college was started at Roorkee. The public education department was established as Charles Wood suggested that priority should be given to primary education. Development in the education field inspired the freedom struggle and Western thoughts led to the awareness of nationalism. English language gained importance as a tool of communication and enabled unity among the people. Literature progressed in English, Hindi, Marathi, Tamil, Kannada and other provincial languages. Lord Carson worked for the progress in the educational field. The British did everything to ensure their long-lasting rule over India by carrying out some developmental activities in the country. Road and railway lines were laid in the country in order to transport raw material from the interiors of the country. The first train was started between Mumbai and Thane. Telegraph lines were laid down to pass on information quickly. These facilities facilitated in building national integrity amongst people by bringing them together. In India, the role of newspapers in creating national awareness was incredible. In the year 1818, various language papers were started in India. Some examples include Dig Darshan, which was the monthly magazine in Bengali, and Samachar Darpan, which was a weekly news magazine in Bengali. Raja Ram Mohan Roy was one of the pioneers in publishing the first weekly Bengali newspaper called Samvad Kaumudi. The newspapers questioned the functioning of the government and therefore incurred the rage of the government and the framing of the rule that no newspaper could be published without a prior approval of the Governor General. Example of one such newspaper is Calcutta Journal, whose editor Buckingham was deported from India. The Indian newspapers express the voice of the people collectively. Hindu Patriot played a major role in highlighting the struggle of the indigo farmers of Bengal. Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar's Soma Prakashas, a Bengali newspaper, advocated nationalistic attitude and also supported the interests of the Bengali farmers during the Indigo Farmers' Revolt in 1860. Amrita Bazar Patrika by Sisir and Motilal Ghosh, the Bengali by Surendranath Banerjee and the Tribune were some of the oldest nationalistic newspapers. Weekly magazines named Kesari in Marathi and Maratha in English were started by one of the prominent extremists, Bal Gangadhar Tilak. Social reforms were publicized in a weekly magazine called The Indian Social Reformer. The first Kannada publication, Mangalore Samachar, was started by a Christian missionary called Herman Frederick Mogling. Karnataka Prakashika and Suryode Prakashika are a few more examples of early weekly newspaper published in Mysore. Let us now Recap all the important points that we have covered in this module on the effects of British rule in India.